Well, in a moment, we'll hear from the Israeli ambassador. But first, I'm joined now by uh, a Hamas spokesman, Dr. Mahmoud Ramadi from the West Bank. Thanks for coming on the program, uh, Dr. Ramadi. You started all this, didn't you? Uh, I don't understand the question, please, if you can repeat well, the, it. Well, the, the Foreign Secretary, our Foreign Secretary, William Haig, said today that Hamas bears principal responsibility for what is happening at the moment in your neighborhood. If you, if Hamas or Islamic Jihad, whoever it was, hadn't fired those missiles at the weekend, we would not be where we are now today. This is not a true, believe me. The aggression started from the Israeli from the moment that they killed the leader of Hamas, Ahmed al Jabari. We know that one hour before the killing of Ahmed al Jabari, we reached a truce between Hamas and Israel through Egypt. And Israel have violated this truce and have killed but several uh, Hamas days leader Ahmed al Jabari. But several days before he was killed, there were missile strikes from Gaza against southern Israel. Yes, but you have to understand that from 2006, the Israelis continue, the, continue their siege against uh, Gaza, and they continue their shelling and bombarding of Gaza. It is not acceptable that our people have always to pay the price. In the, in the same time, the Israelis have to pay the price when they do the aggression. Many of our civilians have been died uh, in the Israeli right. aggression and shelling. Okay. And the Israel, uh, they, they started their electoral campaign from Gaza, and they started with killing Ahmed al-Jabari, uh, and they have but to what pay I the, don't the price. Understand, the, 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 the equation now. Forgive me for interrupting. What I don't understand is why would you want to provoke the Israelis at the moment? Is it because you feel much stronger with the Muslim Brotherhood now in charge in Egypt? Is it because you want to make your mark when Hamas has really been rather forgotten in the events of the last year and a half of the Arab Spring? Listen, we are the victim in Gaza, not we are the, the people who started the occupation for the Israelis and the shilling of the Israelis. We are the, the victims in Gaza. Yes, we found that Egypt is very different now between 2008 and now. In the moment 2008, Israel started his war from Egypt when, Mr. Livni, when Mrs. Livni said that we have to, to invade Gaza. And now. But you're talking about Hamas ancient history. We're talking Muslim about this week. You're talking about events that happened five years ago, six years ago. I'm talking about the events this week. Yes, this week before, before the killing of Ahmed al-Jabari, there are 19 Palestinians have been killed in two, in two, in two weeks before the, the killing of Ahmed al-Jabari. That means the Israelis continue their aggression in Gaza, and they, they want the Palestinians to, to, to be quiet and to not react for the, the Israeli right. crimes. Our people live under okay. the siege, and they have the right to defend himself. Okay. Uh, yes, and that, this is what has happened in Gaza. Okay. Fine. Dr. Romari, we're going to have to leave it here. Thank you very much indeed. Well, let's turn to the Israeli ambassador here in London, uh, Daniel Tubb. Thanks for coming on the program to you as well. Um, is there going to be a land invasion of Gaza? Um, what, what there's going to be is whatever it takes to make sure that the citizens of southern Israel can actually live in peace and quiet without the threat of missiles landing on top of them. Does that involve another 1,300 mostly innocent Gaza civilians having to die like they did last time? Well, the dilemma that we face is that, unfortunately, we're facing Hamas, which is committing these double war crimes, attacking our civilians and hiding from behind their civilians. When we see a situation where month after month the missile range is increasing, the period of time that kids have to spend without going to school is increasing, we're doing what any country You're talking would. about kids not going to school. We're talking about hundreds of kids killed in the last attack and possibly dozens of kids killed this time around. But I mean, every time there's a res an Israeli response to an act of aggression and violence from Hamas, it is completely out of proportion. One of the What's most, the point? One of the most complicated dilemmas that democracies face today is how to deal with terrorist groups who hide in civilian areas. We are doing everything that we can. That includes developing extremely expensive technology, which you described earlier, which tries to take the missiles out of the sky so that we don't have to deal with the problem of going into complicated areas mm. on the ground, schools where weapon launchers have been placed. Is... But you can't do that in every single situation. And just let me finish. Right. If you do say what you're suggesting mm. is that the moment a weapons launcher is in a school, it's out of bounds, you're really issuing an open invitation to every terrorist organization to set up a shop inside a school or a hospital. Okay. So um, the spokesman from Hamas said that this is part of the Israeli election campaign. It is true that the last time we had an Israeli invasion of Gaza was before an Israeli election. The next Israeli election is in January. Is this part of Israel's election collateral? Um, I certainly think not. The fact is, if you have a look at the Israeli spectrum now, everybody in Israel, including the people in Tel Aviv who you described earlier, are supportive of the government. There is no opposition at the moment. I think the question has to be asked of Hamas why they chose this particular time 
why they chose this particular time to engage in such well, in, a steep escalation. In the same vein, I will ask you, are you choosing this particular time to go hell for leather against Gaza because you're feeling a little bit lonely in the neighbourhood? We're choosing this particular time because since the beginning of the year there have been 800 missiles and rockets landing on our civilians. Over the last week there have been 120. Last Saturday night Hamas filed an anti-tank missile which, injured a, which hit a jeep injuring, injuring four Israelis. The reason that we're choosing this time is because Hamas has chosen this time to engage in a steep escalation and no country so could take far, it any longer. And how far are you prepared to take this? Are we looking at another spiral of violence? We are doing... It's not a spiral of violence in a, in a very it simple... It looks like it already. It's not a spiral of violence in a very simple sense. It's been absolutely clear all the way along. There's an asymmetry here. If Hamas had not been firing missiles, there would have been no violence. If Israel stops doing mm. anything, the restraint that we've been showing for the past seven years, unfortunately, the violence doesn't just continue, right. it escalates. There are more airstrikes from Israel tonight against Gaza. Will you go in with boots on the ground into the Gaza Strip anytime we, soon? We are keeping every option available, like any responsible country would, trying to respond to these threats against its civilians. Ambassador Tower, thank you very much. Thank you. you.